Hi everyone and welcome to the webinar Using Courseware in Your Criminal Justice Courses with Mary Dodge. My name is Jill Ragusa and I am the Field Marketer for Criminology and Criminal Justice at Sage Publishing. This one hour webinar will be recorded and archived for future viewing. We'll be, we will be sending out a link to view it to all registrants in the coming weeks. This session is typically part of our Sage ACJS Faculty Development Workshop Series. With the cancellation of ACJS, we decided to move these workshops to a virtual format and to open it up to a broader academic community. We are thrilled that you are here today or watching the recording of this session. A huge thank you to our workshop coordinator, Brian Payne, for pulling all of this together. If any of you have any problems with audio or viewing mode during the webinar, please use the Q&A box at the right of your screen and one of our helpful team members will get back to you ASAP. At the end of the webinar, we will have some time for Q&A from attendees, so please also use the Q&A box to ask any questions to the speaker throughout the webinar. Please also take note of the webinar hashtag, hashtag Sage Talks, and feel free to ask questions or leave comments there. Let me begin by introducing you to our speaker. Mary Dodge earned her PhD in Criminology, Law and Society at the University of California, Irvine. She received her BA and MA in Psychology from the University of Colorado at Colorado Springs. She is a full professor at the University of Colorado, Denver in the School of Public Affairs. Her research articles have appeared in the American Journal of Criminal Justice, Women in Criminal Justice, Contemporary Issues in Criminology, and many others. Her research and writing interests include women in the criminal justice system, white collar crime, policing, prostitution, and courts. Mary has been the recipient of the campus-wide University of Colorado Denver Excellence in Teaching Award. She's received the School of Public Affairs Teaching Award three different times and the, Re and the Research and Creative Activities Award twice. In 2011, she received the School of Public Affairs and University of Colorado's Ec Awards for Excellence in Service. Her research often involves collaboration with local and national police departments and law enforcement agencies. We will be hearing from Mary in just one moment. Before we start, I want to give a little background on the courseware that Mary will be referring to throughout this presentation called Sage Vantage. Vantage is a new intuitive digital platform that blends our content with auto-graded assignments, all designed to ignite student engagement and drive critical thinking. It has very easy course setup and enables students to better prepare for class. At the end of the presentation, I will be showing you all a sneak peek at Vantage to illustrate some of the concepts that Mary talks about today. Without further ado, I will pass it over to Mary Dodge. Uh, thank you, Jill. So uh, th that made me sound great. <laughs> I, had, I had no idea. I'm going to have Jill introduce me for everything now. But um, I have been at this for a long time. Um, and I, I will tell you that my favorite aspect of the job, which of course we all have to do service and research, but it's teaching. Uh, I love being connected to the students. I love being in the classroom with the students. And um, so that's always been the the um, easiest part of the job for me just because it's so exciting. Um, I have, uh, I don't want to admit that I'm really old, but I've been at the University of Colorado Denver now for over 20 years. Um, I think the dean said 25 and I wanted to say no, that can't be true. Uh, so I've been there for a long time and uh, I love my job. The problem for me is that I'm a little bit old school and I've changed. I've changed a lot since last March when COVID hit. Um, we all had this sudden shock of, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Uh, we immediately closed down the campus. Um, that was, I think, I'll never forget, it was March 16th. There were no more classes. And we were thrust into this world of just online teaching. Um, despite that I had established our MCJ program online, I wasn't a real fan of online teaching. I, th I like the human contact. I like being able to see the students. Um, and so I had very little experience. Uh, so you can imagine my anxiety when I had to suddenly start Zooming with students or thinking about um, expanding my Canvas shells. And um, 
one of the things that saved me was that I was using Vantage, and, and I'm not, uh, um, Jill can make the pitch for the uh, platform itself, but I will tell you that had I not had Vantage um, set up, I don't know what I would have done, because the students were already on target for using Vantage, and all my chapter tests were set up, uh, so those, I didn't have to deal with that. Um, I went to, you know, I was trying as many seminars as I could to figure out how to use Zoom. And uh, that was uh, not as difficult as I thought it was. I'm much better than I, I, I was initially now that I've used it. But um, the, the thing about Vantage is it fits any type of class. And now we're teaching hybrid. Um, we're teaching online strictly, either synchronous, synchronously, I know I was going to screw up that word, sorry, <laughs> or asynchronously. Um, I am teaching face-to-face -face one day, and then on the other day that we meet uh, for my class, which is an intro class, I teach by Zoom uh, synchronously, and I use I can use Vantage in any one of those classes. So the, the nice thing about it is the flexibility. Um, so one of the things I want to do first is try a poll. Um, I love polls, uh, and, and I apologize that my face is not on. Uh, my Mac is apparently a little stubborn and is doesn't like go to meetings, so it wouldn't let me. Let, you can't see my expressions, but I'm really excited about this whole thing. So I want to start with a poll, and if everybody could just chime in on this, let's see what kind of answers we get. So this is a little different than Zoom. Um, oh. Okay, so this, this, this poll wanted to know about accountability and reading. And do our students read? Um, so I am not surprised at the results at all. Um, if we look at that, 43% of you said some of the time they read. Uh, ooh, even scarier is the 36% 30, that said rarely. This is one of our big tasks. And Jill, if we could go to uh, slide four, I believe it is. Next slide. Yep. So, hmm. am I off? I'm off a little bit. Jill, do you have a slide that's best practices in teaching? Or no, that's not right. Okay. Well, let's let's talk that's about. Yeah, um, I actually don't think that either one mean matters, but let's because it's more me talking. Yeah. <laughs> you, no you can say, "Oh, Mary, can do you ever shut up?" No, <laughs> um, and and so I'm practicing to be as fast as John Oliver. <laughs> slap at me. Uh, so one of the things that we do have problems with is that students don't read. Uh, it's difficult to get them to read. We, you know, I use book reviews they have to read at least one book. And I know that, well, of course, they they don't have to read it. They could uh, um, <laughs> borrow somebody else's review, but they read one book at least um, that's interesting and fun for them. Right now I'm using I Am Troy Davis, which is a, a book about the death penalty, which is amazing. The Vantage system forces students to read. And to be honest with you, I have um, this conversation with them the first day. Uh, so you've got, if I'm talking to my students, you have an ebook, and as you go through the book, you are doing exercises um, so that your interactive exercises on video, your knowledge checks, and ultimately you're gonna get to the end of the chapter and you're gonna have a test. And then I ask them, why do I do this? And the majority of them respond to make us read. They know that they don't read their textbooks. So the Vantage program actually is entertaining, um, I think, uh, and it does engage the students so that they have to read it. And you can tell, uh, I, I just emailed four or five of my students who are falling behind because they're not reading the book and they're not keeping up with the Vantage uh, assignments that they need to do. So some of the things to do, and this this is 
for online teaching um, and for and using Vantage is that and interesting I'm just finishing a course on online teaching um, through AQ uh, so one of some of the best practices that we can do and some of the things we can do to make our classes better one is an engagement trigger is what we call it and so engagement triggers can be either in an ebook or they can be um, YouTubes uh, or any type of video or uh, question or something that grabs the students. And I tried to do this right at the beginning of the class. So for example, this week, um, these couple of weeks, we've been using the Breonna Taylor case and um, the videos will really give them the information and trigger them to engage in discussions, which is what I'm looking for. They're, um, these are low stake. Uh, they're getting the information, they can repeat back, they can talk about their perspective. The second thing that's important that I've just learned, uh, I just assume everybody takes notes. Well, not all students do take notes. Uh, I have a, a special class this week, but if they have an ebook and they have the Vantage system, they can highlight right into that. Um, and I do that when I'm reading an ebook. I see an interesting passage I might want to quote someday, or I think that I might want to use. You can highlight and make comments so that they are focusing on the learning objectives. That's what we want them to do, I think, I do, uh, as we go through each chapter. And one of the, the things that I'm willing to share any of these things with you, um, just you can email me, but on Canvas, I will uh, give them tips for taking notes. And uh, this semester, I tried a skeletal outline for them to see if that would work. And it, it, they showed me that they could take good notes during a lecture. Uh, the other thing that's most important, and especially online, is this active learning cycle that we're portraying the concepts right. And the way I get the students to be more active is having them apply these to their everyday life, to incidents that have happened in the criminal justice system, so that they're in a constant cycle of active learning. If they're just, um, I, I, I don't want, we've all had colleagues who will stand there, and I've had several, uh, and just lecture or, uh, online, uh, just put up a discussion and let them have at it and not chime in on that discussion. You have to be active to keep them active, at least from my perspective. Um, so we want students so that they can effectively explore and apply the textbook materials. And you can get that done by the, the videos, uh, using videos. Vantage has videos, uh, lots of different videos to use and exercises uh, where they're, they're really thinking and exploring the issues and using the critical thinking skills and reasoning through what could happen or what might happen and seeing different perspectives. Um, one of the best ways to do this if you're teaching on Zoom, Zoom's wonderful. Uh, I'm, I, I'm a little surprised. When I teach face-to-face, -face, I don't know the students because we all have masks on and we can't get near each other. Zoom is far more personal and I can really relate to the students. Um, so typically what I'll do is some kind of engagement trigger, uh, such as a video or um, videos work really well for these students. Um, and I, I just lost thought of what else, but anything you can do to say, hey, this is really exciting. And then the next thing I, I've learned is to use micro lectures. So I keep my lectures down to Oh, probably a maximum of five PowerPoints, and, and that's a lot. Um, I did one the other day on the rule of law, and I had three PowerPoints because there were just four concepts I wanted them to ultimately understand about the rule of law and then try to um, apply that. So I do micro lectures, and in fact, during one class period, we're about um, an hour and 15 minutes for each class, I can do uh, two micro lectures and break it up with different discussions and videos and breakout groups. So one of the things that I've noticed about Zoom since we're teaching online and trying to change the way we approach things is that these breakout groups and even a, um, a discussion, uh, if you have a large class, you're gonna have to use big breakout groups. My class is 25, so we can have a, a 
entire discussion with the classroom, but it helps establish our community. And the other thing, these students have been so respectful of diversity, um, and we want that, and they respect diversity of opinions. Um, so we have all kinds of opinions, whether they're liberal, conservative, whatever the case might be, but, but ultimately I want them to engage in critical thinking. Um, the next slide. So, Mary, is there, sorry, I'm not sure if you want, the next slide is. This is, this is fine. This is fine. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, one of the things that, it, that um, yeah, that would have been the slide a long time ago. <laughs> Sorry, Jill. That was one of the, I had that as the first slide. So the, um, so let me just reinforce that point as I would if I were in the classroom is that Vantage will encourage and give students accountability for reading the textbook. Um, and so that's one of the reasons that, and I'm not trying to sell Vantage to you, but that's one of the reasons that I love it. <laughs> Just, I know my students are reading and when the ones that, that are ignoring the textbook, then I can talk to them about it or send them an email about that. So we do want to establish accountability. Can we go on to the next slide? I'll just be surprised. Okay. Um, you know, Julie, I think this was my fault. I have my, my slide notes mixed up. No, but you're totally fine. We could go to the next one, too. I'm pretty I'm good at looking at it. If we can go back to Winnie the Pooh. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. One of the things I, I would say about this is that um, I love this slide because in my day and age, oh gosh, I sound old. I take, I'm not that old. But um, Winnie the Pooh, sitting down with a good book, was my idea of fun, um, no matter what the book was. And I love it. We didn't have the same kind of distractions, and especially in a COVID environment that we're trying to deal with right now, many of these students are worried about their families and uh, food and tuition costs and working, and then they have all the distractions online. So you can see where they would get frustrated. Um, so the if you're teaching online, you have to be way ahead of, of the curve, although, to keep them focused on the material. Um, so the next slide. I'll just be surprised, Jill. Yeah, this is exactly the one I wanted to look at. It's one of the things about Vantage is it's a user-friendly platform. I have used Canvas um, and I use it as a supplement to my classes to have assignments, the grade books, um, announcements, uh, and um, quite honestly for a few years I've had a TA do everything, so I'm relearning. And I don't find Canvas particularly user-friendly. In fact, I find it annoying. Um, and I've used Blackboard years and years ago. Our campus switched over to Canvas. But with Advantage, it's a user-friendly platform, not only for me as the instructor to set up, I mean, it literally doesn't take any time at all to set up a class for Vantage, um, but the students find it user-friendly. They don't, I, I'm not, I don't have a lot of questions with Canvas. I, I just had a student, didn't know how to turn, two students didn't know how to turn in assignments on Canvas. So, and I, that does not happen with Vantage. Um, you can see easily the grades and the progress for the students. I think I mentioned that and identify those that fall behind. Uh, the other thing is the simplicity in grading. And I use it a little bit differently um, everybody can make their choices. Uh, I do assign every exercise in Canvas and then um, figure out how many points, um, leaving some extras. So I think there's 647 points available if you do every exercise. They just need to reach 500 points and that's an A. So I use it um, somewhat differently. It worked last semester for me. Um, the poll number two. So we just want to know if you think students enjoy interactive exercises. That's what I would have expected. 
And I do this to my students too. Um, there's, there's a right answer there. And yeah, they do enjoy them. And that's why Canvas is so fun um, for them online. Or even sometimes I do some of the exercises in the classroom. I'll pull it up and uh, you've got a scenario that they will go through. And um, we can go to the next, yeah. yeah they've got a scenario that, that, that's actually, um, they're, they're beautifully done. And the students, you can go through it and then answer questions about that. Um, sometimes I do, I do it in the classroom. Most of the time they're doing this on their own. But they're thinking about real world cases. Um, so uh, the one that comes to mind is in chapter one where um, a, uh, an, uh, an older man is parked his RV and the neighborhood doesn't like it and they call the police and they and he has some mental health issues and and so he doesn't understand what's going on they're taking their home away from him and uh, then there's a series of questions about that that students can actually apply the material that they've read so and that's connecting that to specific cases uh, one of the other things and it says lecture spark I have fallen in love with sages lecture sparks. Uh, I use them in numerous ways. These are topical issues and Sage will provide um, typically links to YouTubes. Um, so that's where we were just before the um, we started we were talking about the Breonna Taylor case and I was saying I had to use that as a case study last week and uh, Jessica reminded me that that came from lecture sparks. Um, but they provide that. They provide PowerPoints which are easily um, editable, so you can make it fit you, fit your personality, your style of teaching. Um, choose some of them for a micro lecture, not use all of them. They provide other resources for the students, and they are absolutely incredible. Um, so you can use those. I've used them on my Canvas shell. I've used them um, through Zoom. I use them in a classroom. They're they're a jewel of a tool. Wow, I can't believe I just said that, <laughs> but I did. <laughs> okay, so, and that's one of the things that when you have this, and they, they even, they give you discussion questions um, for the students. So those are an incredible um, service that SAGE offers. So if we can go to the next slide. Uh, I am, because I'm so familiar with the introduction to criminal justice textbook uh, written by uh, my co-author, Callie Renison and myself, I tend to focus on that book. Um, and I, in the future, any book I can find that has the advantage to go with it, I will adopt for my elective classes. But lately, um, for the last few years, I, the only thing I've really taught is uh, intro to criminal justice. The book um, and Vantage, you have a media library. So not only do you you have other people, people working in the field, discussing their jobs and what they do and how they do it. You have um, Callie and myself giving very short lectures. Those are all things you can pick and choose from to use. The best part about the book is the case studies. And we have videos of all of our case studies that are woven throughout the textbook. So we had a, a gang member, a former gang member, um, a young lady who had been in prison, and we have videos that can be used. We also have the students um, love to hate the um, sex offender, and when he's on video, it, you know, it's kind of creepy for some of them, but they're just such uh, powerful examples. All the activities, whether it's the chapter test, the knowledge checks, um, just to see if the students are paying attention to what the big points are. Uh, I know we have PowerPoints for the book. It's nice to have uh, a template for the PowerPoints. I tend to add pictures and, and reduce some of the words to make them. Um, the other thing about Vantage is the students get this direct feedback. Um, and if they're doing a knowledge check and they get it wrong, they get a hint and they can redo it. So it's not a, it's a low stake exercise. It doesn't create a lot of anxiety, but it also gives all of these things, give us, oh, um, give us the idea that they're understanding what we really want them to learn. 
um, and they can see on Vantage, I'm sure Jill can show you this, their visual pro uh, process, so progress. So students are, are really visual now. There, a lot of them are visual learners and uh, we need to take that into account as we teach online. Uh, the next one, uh, yeah. So can we have poll three, please? Okay, if students are unhappy about some aspect of the class, they tell me. Yeah, okay, this is, this is, um, uh, not not really surprising. Sometimes they tell us uh, if they're unhappy about the class. Uh, I, I think my students, uh, well, they'll tell me TA first, and then uh, they don't get what they need. They they come to me, but this semester has been uh, fun for me to directly interact without a TA, but sometimes they do tell us that they don't like this, or this isn't working for them, or whatever the case might be, and if we can go to the uh, slide, one of the things about Vantage is I don't get complaints. Um, the, and so I called it the no complaint factor because students seem to enjoy going through this and they seem to enjoy the data activities and the videos and the knowledge checks. And, and I'm not gonna read all these to you, but these are actual comments from my students about Vantage. Um, and I try to do a midterm evaluation to see how we're doing and how they're responding to all aspects of the class, particularly with Vantage. And then, uh, of course, they do their, their uh, faculty course questionnaire at the end, and they find Vantage to be an asset for them when they're doing their work. Uh, the, one, the one thing I will tell you is if you decide to use this as a learning platform, which can be integrated with Canvas, um, I don't know how you do that, but it can be, and um, uh, I know Callie Renison did it with her intro class, but um, you can do it either way. You can integrate it in your Canvas or you can have it separate. I keep mine separate, and but you wanna get an early start with students because they don't understand um, sometimes what they actually need to, to purchase. So. Your, your Sage rep, uh, the, the one in Colorado, Trisha, I will give her kudos for being on top of things and helping me and always knowing um, to send me the ISBN numbers that I need to turn into our bookstore. But um, there's different ways to get it. You can you can buy it separately uh, where you have the ebook and just the access code advantage, or you can have a, a loose page um, or a soft cover book and package that with the access code, but that, that can cause a lot of confusion for students the first couple of weeks. Um, I have learned, I will give you a, 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 my biggest tip is don't start anything the first week. Um, I just I just assign chapter one for the first two weeks because you're dealing with students that are confused about Canvas, they're confused about Vantage, they're confused about Zoom, uh, with the changes that were, you know, going through students get confused so i have given myself an extra week to try and get everybody on the bus as i tell my students let's all get on the same bus and so you want to start that early before your class your class actually meets and then you'll kind of deal with situations that come up for those first couple of weeks once they're settled in it's it's gold okay so i'll shut up <laughs> <laughs> awesome. No, thank you so much, Mary. That was awesome for that overview. Um, I do want to say if anybody has any questions, please use the chat function. Um, it should be part of your toolbar and send any questions to Mary or myself. Um, but I'm actually going to dive into the Vantage platform. This is not going to be a formal demo. I'm just going to take some things that Mary mentioned throughout her presentation and just show you what she's talking about. And then if you do want to learn more about Vantage, please also put that in the chat if you want a one-on-one -on -one demo where you can 
um, I'll give you a call, I'll share my screen, go through the ins and outs of Vantage, ask any questions that you might have for your specific course. So go ahead and put that in the chat if you want a one-on-one -on -one demo after you see this. And then I'll also be sending a SurveyMonkey link following where you can um, request a demo there as well. But just to give you guys a quick look into Vantage, so I'm gonna go ahead and log in. Okay, and when you log in, um, I have a few different demo courses here. You would have any courses that you have in Vantage would be here. So I'm gonna go in actually as a student so you could see how your students would see Vantage if they logged into the platform. And the first thing they would see is this dashboard. So here's me, Jill Ragusa. There's a little um, gauge right here of how much of the course they've completed based on how many assignments their professor has assigned to them. And they can see their progress right here too. So I've, I've taken one out of 14 chapter tests. I haven't completed any of the activities or the knowledge checks, but as the, as the semester progresses, I would be able to see this changing over time. And then right here, students would see what activities are assigned per their professor and when they're due. And you could go right into the activity right from here, or they can actually do the activity as they're reading through the um, book. And then they can see any of their completed work. So you can see I completed the chapter test and what my current grade on that test was. So like Mary said, the ebook is actually integrated right into the platform. So everything that the student would need is right in Sage Vantage, the ebook, their activities, their knowledge checks, um, chapter tests. And then as the professor, you have, you can assign whatever you want, obviously. Like Mary said, she assigns everything and you can pick if you wanted it to be completed, um, completed for a grade or certain points available or just um, completed or not completed, you totally have the flexibility to decide for you. You can dive right into the content. So the table of contents right here, students could go right to chapter one and it brings them right to the place in the book to start their reading. You can also see that the pro how, how much of the chapter they've completed so if they logged out and logged back in, they have they can see that their notes and highlights, just like Mary mentioned, um, and then you can actually download the notes and highlights if they wanted to study for the test and see everything that they took note of. Um, one thing I do want to mention is any of the boxed features that you see within the textbook have been collapsed, so it doesn't take away from any of the content. Um, so they can just work through the book. I do wanna show you, so like Mary said, within Vantage, there's video activities, data exercises, knowledge checks. So here is um, a video activity. And if your professor assigned it, they can actually go dive in, do the activity. It gives them direct feedback right there. Um, and then even if their professor or you didn't assign the activity, students still have access to all the videos if they wanted to still view them. It's not taken away from them or anything. And I will, I'm going to actually go down to, there's some polls throughout just to help with engagement here. You can see um, kind of how your class responded or all respondents across the board, across anybody that's using this book in Vantage. It's just kind of a cool tool, just like we used polls throughout this presentation to help with that engagement factor, those engagement triggers that Mary mentioned. And then I do want to show knowledge checks. So what Mary said was holding students accountable to the reading is such a big challenge. We hear it all the time from professors across all the disciplines. So these knowledge checks really help hold them accountable to the reading. It's just kind of a checking their understanding. So they've read a few pages of the book. You can get started on the knowledge check. Um, which of the following statements accurately describes, et cetera, et cetera. I'll just go ahead and take a guess. You'll see there's a hint. If you wanted a hint, as a professor, you can turn the hints on or off if you want to allow students to have the hints available. So that might be, oh, okay, this is the answer that I think. Oh, I got it right. 
and then it gives you a little information. If I were to get it wrong, it would tell me what the correct answer is, and then you can actually go more on this topic, and it takes you right to that section of the book, so they could, they obviously need a little refresher on what that means. So, like Mary said, it just holds them accountable to the reading, so they come to school, come to class prepared so you know who has done the knowledge checks um, what their grade has been on them if you decide that you want to know that information again totally up to you so let's actually go back over here um, to I'll go ahead to the reports oh you know what sorry let me actually, before I go back to the, to the instructor side, let me show you one more thing in the student view. So again, here's my dashboard as a student. Um, oopsies. wanted to show you this activity library right up here. So as you saw when I went into chapter one, those videos or engagement triggers are actually throughout the chapter. They're embedded right into the content. But if you wanted to take a look at just all the activities that certain chapters have, so here is chapter one. So you can see we have one of our simulation videos. There's a data activity. And there's also a video activity. So you could actually go just jump to the section. Um, like Mary had said, it's so important to keep students engaged with breaking up the content, getting them critically thinking. These simulations actually are a great critical thinking tool where students watch a minute or so clip of an actual CJ situation and then they're asked at the end, how would they decide or how would they act on that situation? And there's a couple questions of follow up. So um, you can see here tons of activities throughout the book. Again, you could assign what your students actually um, have to take for credit or take have a point value. Same with the chapter tests as well. Um, there are 15 questions. Again, you assign what you would like. And like Mary said, um, with Vantage, you can see the progress of your students. I'm sorry, this isn't, um, filled out. But right here, you would actually see, okay, Jane Smith, how many sessions, how many times has she logged into the Vantage platform? When was her last time logging in? How many sections, how many hours or time that she spent in Vantage? So when Mary was referring to, you can see if a student is, isn't doing well in the class and they come to you and say they don't understand why they're not doing well, Mary is able to actually log in and see, oh, the semester is almost over and the student has spent an hour in Vantage. There's their problem. They're not completing, they're not reading, they're not completing the assignments. Um, and you just have insight to all of that, which is great. And then um, same with assignments, this can all be ex exported um, into like, like Mary said, you can use this with, you can integrate it into your Canvas or your LMS. Um, you would work with your sales rep and we'll work directly with your LMS specialist if needed to get that right into your LMS system, or you can use it on its own and you can import the grades at the end, totally up to you. And here um, you would actually in the grade book, you can see if there's certain, I'm sorry, this isn't filled out. Um, you can see with students if they're, what's late, what's complete, um, if the instructor has modified it, how many assignments would be listed out here. I'm so sorry, it's not listed here. And then you can also have the insight into if there's certain learning objectives that your, your class is having an issue with, um, it'll actually tell you which learning objectives so you know kind of where to spend the time or where, you're, where your students may need more help versus they understand it, kind of move on to the next section. So that's just kind of a quick, very quick overview of Vantage. Again, if you want a demo of Vantage, um, we can also get you a login so you can kind of play around with it yourself if you want to. A lot of people like to explore that way. Happy to do that. Just put that in the chat or I will follow up with everybody via email to see if you want a demo or access. Um, one thing I do wanna show before we get to questions, just because Mary mentioned it, 
is Sage Lecture Spark. Um, this doesn't have to do with the course for everybody, but we are finding that professors find it extremely helpful in their courses, especially while some of you guys are teaching online, maybe for the first time or teaching your hybrid courses, just like Mary. So criminal justice, I will make sure to send this in the uh, follow-up email as well. So pretty much every Sunday night, an email gets sent out and it's posted on this site of a topic that is a current criminal justice topic. So these are these serve as great lecture launchers um, for in-person classes or online, totally up to you. But it gives you a topic. And so we'll go into this one. So this was from this week. Here's two Los Angeles sheriff, sheriff deputies shot and critically injured in ambush. Gives you a little bit about the topic. And then it gives you a PowerPoint slide deck with just a few slides so that you can use it at the start of your class if you wanted to, you can edit as needed. And then it also shows, gives you some video resources related to this topic, again, that you can use in class if you want to. And then some ass uh, assessment opportunities, again, totally optional, but just to help you out, we know you're busy. So again, every week there are new topics that come out um, some people use all of them, some people use some of them, totally up to you, but it's just kind of the work is done for you. So let me go back to the PowerPoint and get some questions answered. Um, I have one, Mary, for you. Um, have you seen an improvement in student grades since switching to courseware? Uh, huh, that's that's interesting, and I wish I had actual data. Uh, instinctively, I would say yes, because I have I haven't had any students go through the semester and not finish the the Vantage course, which um, that that's pretty amazing, and almost all of them hit four to five hundred points pretty easily. So um, that means they're reading the material. But I, I I don't have data. Maybe that's something I should do for a, an article. <laughs> awesome. Um, someone says this looks great, but does it really save you time? I already have so much on my plate. I'm worried about adding something else on top of it. Oh, I agree too. Um, I, it's amazing that uh, for me, my salary has been reduced and I'm furloughed for so many days and I'm working more than I ever have. This has saved me an enormous amount of time uh, and I've lost my TA, which <laughs> is terrible. Uh, what a tragedy, but this has saved me so much time. I didn't, I I know where the students are at. I know what they're doing and I don't have to worry about putting tests up and I just let them do the test. Um, they, they get one chance at it and they do it at home. I'm not proctoring, I'm not worried about, I don't think they're cheating, they can use their books, but I can't believe, uh, I don't know how I would have made it through COVID, last COVID semester without Vantage. I would have been a wreck. Um, and, uh, and I have a lot on my plate. So uh, going in and setting this up and then just letting it go, um, I check it every couple of weeks. It's, it's, it's a lifesaver. I know, and, and I know with online teaching, the worst part is if you're using Canvas or Blackboard is prepping the course because there has to be so much planning involved. Um, there's a little bit more flexibility in a hybrid course if you're using Zoom, but um, yeah, it's, it's worth it. And it's easy, it's easy to understand. And I uh, can be an idiot sometimes when it comes to technology. And maybe that's why Canvas confuses me. So easy advantage, I just, I have it set up. Um, yes, it's worth it. <laughs> awesome, that's good to hear, Mary. Yeah. Um, we have a question about what other courses um, our Vantage in, I, I will help with that. Um, so we have a few titles for Intro Criminal Justice. Um, we have Brandel's Police and Society, so Intro to Policing we have in Vantage. And then coming in 2021, we have Criminology, Corrections, and Juvenile Justice. And then hopefully after that, we have even more courses. So more to come there. Yes, I might just recommend that you do the uh, White Collar Crime book. Yes. Okay. <laughs> next semester. 
<laughs> yes. Yeah. It could be on the list. Um, let's see. Someone asked, do you have to adopt a text to use the platform? Yes. Um, the textbooks are actually integrated. Our content is integrated into Vantage. So, like I said, we don't have all of our textbooks um, or content in Vantage yet. Uh, definitely there is a need and we're having a lot of success across disciplines with Vantage, really positive market feedback. So we're putting more and more titles into Vantage, but you do need to technically adopt a text um, in Vantage. Um, like Mary, Mary briefly said it in the presentation, there is options. So if you have students that really love the print book and you re really want to use Vantage in your course, but you don't want them to only be able to use an ebook or you, you want to give them the option, there are options in Vantage to have Vantage plus like the loose leaf or plus the paperback book. So we have not gotten rid, I know some, some publishers have gotten rid of like doing paperback or loose leaf and they're only doing courseware ebook. We have not done that. Um, there are options of different formats for the books, but if you are assigning Vantage or assignments through Vantage, the student would want to actually um, have Vantage, and so they would, but they could add the paperback or loose leaf copy on um, if they wanted to. Um, how well does Vantage interface with the Moodle platform? Great. It's, we can be, you can fully integrate into Moodle, um, Canvas, Blackboard, any of the big learning management systems that probably all of you guys are using at your um, schools or universities, um, integrate with Vantage. And again, we could talk specifics about how that works. Um, the reps fully can help with that. And then we can also work with your LMS specialist at the school if needed. I just have to comment that Moodle sounds like a um, one of those dogs where you have a butt and a poodle put together. <laughs> like a golden doodle. Yeah. <laughs> totally true. Um, another question. Do you have any other recommendations for how to engage students online? Um, so, Jill, do you, I, I, do you want me to take that? Yeah, sure. I think yeah. Yeah, it, I find online to be to be quite a challenge, and um, so one of the ways that um, that I engage them is to give them easy questions to break out into groups. Um, and right now, I'll break them into a certain number of uh, groups and have a different question for each one, or they have to come and report back. The other thing. Um, is that uh, you offer a, you can offer a lot of low stake assignments um, i don't do that just because i don't have time to do all that that intricate grading but um, i use videos and as i mentioned micro lectures i've never done that before i mean usually i have a powerpoint and it's a 40 minute powerpoint typical lecture um, and in the powerpoints put pictures put cartoons put things that um, the students will enjoy uh, I use, I've noticed, I mean, there's a, using movies in classroom has, um, they just don't like it anymore. Uh, about 50% of my students do not want to watch videos, but I, I use, um, and I can use these online, I use John Oliver. Um, he is amazing and funny, and so that helps um, the, um, I'm trying to think of some of the things I've learned in the last six weeks in my classes. I do have, um, I have reflection um, papers on all the different types of things that I've done. If you're teaching intro to criminal justice, I'd be happy to share those with you. Uh, it, just email me and, and I can share them to you. But they're all new practices that I implemented during this online course that I'm taking. Um, so uh, to keep, and, and the other thing is to keep things short because attention span is so low in these students. Uh, and also, I find that students will engage too if um, uh, I'll ask them to Google something for me. So I don't know the answer or have no idea what they're talking about. If they said Moodle, I wouldn't know. Uh, so I will ask somebody, could you Google that and get us the information real quickly? And they'll do that. It's, it's really amazing how quickly they can find information on their phones or their laptops or iPads. So they're just some of the things that just pop into my head, but but I'm willing to share um, anything that I've that I've picked up in this um, this class that I've been taking. 
Awesome. Thanks, Mary. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm actually going to, we are going to, we haven't had any other questions come in yet. Please continue to send any questions you may have. Um, since we have a little time, Jessica is actually going to share her screen. She has uh -huh. her reports um, filled out. So you can, act, it is pretty impressive. And Mary, you talked a lot about how you could have insight into where your students are, and that's super helpful. So Jessica, We'll show that really quick. Great. Can everybody see my screen? Yes, okay? we can. Uh, we see a spreadsheet. Oh, wrong screen. Okay. okay I wasn't sure which screen it was going to pull there. I had a 50 50 <laughs> shot. Okay, great. So here are the reports that Jill was trying to show you. You can see I actually do have some data populated in mine. So this is a view that you would have as the instructor. So as Jill mentioned and, and Mary was talking about, you can see how many times these students have logged in and how much time they've spent in the platform, right? So if James Johnston comes into your office and says, you know, I don't know why I'm not doing well on these tests, you could, you could look in and say, okay, you know, you've logged in three times, but you've really only spent a total of one minute looking at the content for this course, you know, why don't you spend a little bit more time reading the chapters, doing the assignments. It just gives you that assignment and can also help you identify struggling students early on. We know that that's something that's hugely important with these online classes, especially um, yeah. where we need to be paying attention to those students who are struggling early on so that we can make sure we're getting them to the end of that course. Um, here's an example of the learning objective performance. So this is aggregated at the course level and it lists out the learning objectives for each chapter and how students are performing on those learning objectives based on their responses in the knowledge check to the knowledge checks and so you know you could look at this before your lecture you know you're going to go in and talk about chapter one and you might be able to look at this and see like okay you know students really seem to be able to identify the past so much a crime may be handled in the criminal justice system so maybe i can scale that back but it looks like we really need to dig in and talk about the consensus for an exact definition of crime and why that's difficult so I've talked to a lot of instructors who've said that this really does help them shape their lectures so that they know where their students are struggling. And again, they can make sure that they're catching those students and, and making sure that they really understand that content very thoroughly. Was there anything else, Jill, that you wanted me to show within these reports? I think that was pretty much it. The seeing actual data from where you're, how much time they've spent and then the learning objectives. Um, Jessica, do you can you go to the um, the grade book? Yes, I can. Does it does it show your students in that? No, I don't have any grade book data populated for okay. this class area. The only reason I asked is that this is um, what I rely on to see how far the students are and if they're keeping up with the reading material, and it's it takes me. Uh, a few minutes just to check and see which students are having problems uh, or are not completing the assignment. So um, this page in particular is really important to me. Great, and have you had good success kind of reaching out to the students and following up with them based on that? Um, I just emailed five students and haven't heard back from them. So I'll go in uh, in a couple of days and check and see how if they've uh, that little email has inspired them to go back. I, I suspect it has. <laughs> That's great. Great. Okay, and I don't think we have any other questions. If anything does come up, um, please do um, send us questions um, with the follow-up survey. Um, for sure. And thank you very much, Mary. Um, that presentation was fantastic. Um, and thank you everybody for joining us. And in the coming weeks, again, please be on the lookout for an email that will include the link to view the entire webinar and the slides, as well as any other questions that come through. Uh, please stay connected with us on our blog, Sage Connection, for more information about upcoming webinars. Thank you all. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, Mary. Mm -hmm. Have a good day, everybody. Thanks.